Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tales at Two. I'm Miss Erin. Thank you for joining us again this afternoon. Uh, hopefully, we've got some return guests. Uh, new guests, we welcome you as well to our Tales at Two. Uh, for anyone that hasn't been to this before, it's every t every afternoon, weekday afternoon at 2 p.m. We're doing some little educational programs to kind of get you guys uh, thinking about nature and hopefully not feeling crazy inside your homes if you're stuck there. So uh, Cedar Run, currently our nature center is closed. Our hiking trails and our wildlife housing area do currently remain open as well as our wildlife hospital. So we still are open to input um, wildlife should they need some help. So today's topic is uh, Build a Bird Part 2. So if you all saw our stream yesterday, we were talking about Build a Bird Part 1, which was uh, beaks of birds. Um, today we're going to be talking feet. So we're going to expand a little bit on what we learned yesterday. So if you didn't see yesterday's live feed, you can go back and watch it um, as a repeat on our Facebook page or also on our YouTube page. So today we're going to be talking about the adaptations that birds have with their feet. So yesterday we learned that birds have lots of different types of beaks depending on what they like to eat. So if they're a bird that maybe likes to eat fish, they're going to need something that's going to help them tear that fish up. If they're a bird that catches insects, they're going to have like tweezer type beaks to help them get insects out of logs and into trees and things like that. So today we're switching it over to feet. So as you guys can maybe picture in your head, there's lots of different kinds of birds. They all have different types of feet depending on what they do with their feet. So in the case of some birds, they might be using their feet to run. Some birds might be using their feet to climb the sides of trees. Some birds might be using their feet to um, help them catch their food. So their feet are kind of like tools or shoes that we maybe have as humans, right? You're gonna wear your sneakers if you're going running. You're gonna use your flippers if you're out in the pool. You're gonna use your sandals if it's a hot day and you're walking on the beach, right? So our birds are gonna have feet depending on where they like to live and what they do with their feet. So if you saw our feed yesterday, I showed you lots of different tools and we tried to figure out um, what different tools are like beaks. We're gonna do a similar thing today with the feet. So I'm gonna start off with hopefully an easy one for all of you. So I'm sure some of you guys, especially our kids out there, may have some flippers that you wear in the pool, right? So what kind of bird maybe would have a foot that's similar to a flipper? It's got a lag sometimes. <laughs> So I'm sure maybe some of you gave me are guessing and maybe you haven't gotten to type it yet. Our friends, the ducks, are the guys that are gonna have the flipper feet. So they're not the only ones that are gonna have feet that are like flippers, but they are the ones that everybody seems to know that have their webbed foot. So their foot is built to help them when they're swimming in the water. Lots of other birds like to swim in the water and they're gonna have a similar foot to a duck, right? But these feet are gonna help them not only to swim, but if they're a duck or a type of bird that likes to dive under the water, they're gonna help them be able to do that a little bit easier too. All right, let's try another sort of easy one. So this one isn't necessarily a foot, right? Not something that a human would wear on their feet, but a fork. What type of bird might have a foot that's similar to a fork? Weird one, I know, right? <laughs> no guesses? All right, friends, so our raptors, our birds that like to catch their meat with their feet are gonna have a foot that's like a fork. On their feet they're gonna have really sharp claws called talons and those are gonna help them hold on to their food so they don't lose it once they catch it. So lots of birds are meat eaters. Some birds are gonna catch their meat maybe with their beaks, right? But the raptors are the guys that are gonna catch their meat with their feet. So their feet are gonna be a whole lot like their fork helping them pick up the food that they want to eat. All right, kind of a strange one. Back scratcher. What kind of bird might have a foot that has a scratcher? that they'd maybe want to scratch in the dirt and do things like that. You guys are being quiet again on me today. So lots of ground birds are gonna have feet that scratch. So they're gonna use their little claws on their feet and their feet that are pretty strong and can move really easily to help them to dig in the dirt and find things to eat there. So maybe they're looking for seeds or little things like that. Maybe they're eating bugs, but they're gonna use the little claws on their feet to help them dig under the dirt. So one that you guys maybe know is the chicken, right? Or some of our other birds that are gonna be scratching are little birds like quail and turkeys and things like that. All right, next. It's definitely a lag. Someone just said chicken. Ah, I like it. <laughs> but I think that probably came a few, so, few seconds ago. Now I've got my stinky sneaker. What kind of bird might have a foot that's like a sneaker? 
So it's making them run fast. It's not gonna look like a sneaker, but it's gonna act like a sneaker. It's gonna help them to move faster running along the ground. And I'll give you a hint, and we don't have too many of them around here. The one I'm thinking of is a rather large bird. I'll give you all a second. My friend, the ostrich. So there's lots of birds that like to run, maybe aren't the best at flying, or they prefer to run because they're better at it than they are at flying. So the ostrich's foot is gonna be similar to a sneaker. It's gonna be a big foot that's gonna help them move quickly across the ground. Does someone have a funny comment? Jim says Roadrunner. Roadrunner, he would have one like that too. So any of the birds that are mostly using their feet to move rather than using their feet to fly are gonna have a foot that acts like a sneaker. It's gonna help them move much quicker. All right, this one is my snowshoe. And Miss Rachel told me I picked the wrong picture for this one. <laughs> So a snowshoe is going to help us stay on top of the snow, right? So some birds may want to stay on top of the snow, and that's the one that Miss Rachel was thinking of. She was thinking of ptarmigan. Those guys live where there's lots of snow, so they want to stay on top of the snow rather than sink down. So having a really wide foot like a snowshoe, it's going to help us so you don't sink into the snow. But the bird that I was thinking of instead were wading birds. So the birds that go in the water and they wade through the mud. They don't want to sink deep down into the mud and get stuck, so usually they have really, really long legs and really large spread out feet. And the spread out foot is going to make it so they don't sink into the mud as they're walking around. They can move freely through the mud. Think about if you guys have ever stepped in an ooky mud spot, right, your shoe might get stuck or get stuck in there. They don't want that to happen to their foot. Alright, so if you guys can see, there's lots of different types of bird feet. Right? Not just the ones that I named for you guys. Right. So some of the feet might help the birds to climb. Some of the birds' feet might help them to swim or run. Sometimes though, they might need them to perch or grasp, right? So these guys have lots of different types of feet depending on what kind of things they like to do. So a perching foot is going to be a bird that's going to spend a lot of time sitting in the trees or sitting on the branches. So lots of songbirds have perching feet or they might have climbing feet like woodpeckers do. All right, we also have our scratching foot that we were talking about, our wading foot, our grasping foot. So now I'm gonna show you guys some of the feet that we have in our collection here at Cedar Run. So if anyone's just joining us, we're doing Build a Bird Part Two. This is feet today. If you missed part one, that was beaks yesterday, so you can go back and check them out. So all of the, the beaks that we saw yesterday, I have the same animals but I have their feet today so they're going to match up with the ones that we saw yesterday. So I'm going to start with the easy one to start off. If we can zoom in on that a little bit. Anyone have an idea of what foot this guy might be? Right. He's got four toes which is kind of hard to see. He does have claws on his feet. Right? They're not very large like some birds might have, but every bird has claws on their feet, no matter what type of bird they are. They just might be different sizes and different sharpnesses. Does anyone have an idea of whose foot this is? Nothing? All right, so this is my friend, the mallard, the duck. So all of our ducks are gonna have a nice webbed foot like this. They're gonna use their claws when they're walking on the ground, but for the most part, they're using the webbing to help them when they're swimming in the water. So any bird that's going to spend a lot of time in the water swimming is going to have a webbed foot like this. Whether it's a duck or a goose or a swan, these guys need to have the webbed foot to help them get through the water better. Or a penguin. Or a penguin. You got it. So penguins are a tricky one. People don't always think about their feet, but they're not very good at walking. They don't fly. So these guys are going to have a swimming foot also because they move the fastest when they're swimming underneath the water. Good job, friends. All right, next one. I'm going to do this one. So, as you can see compared to my duck foot, much, much sharper claws. And in the case of this guy, it's called talons, right? His foot looks much larger and much stronger. Does anyone have an idea of whose foot this could be? Nothing yet. I'll give you all a second or two. So if you watched yesterday's feed, we saw this guy's oh, skull yesterday. They said hawk or eagle. Oh, you're very close. This is my friend, the osprey. So a hawk or eagle's foot would look almost exactly like this, but the way we really can tell the difference, at least when I have all our artifacts, is the very bottom of it is extra rough. So our friends the ospreys love to catch fish. 
So they don't want that wet, slimy fish slipping out of their foot. So if you were to feel this, and I know you can, I wish you could, it's very sandpapery on the bottom. So they're not losing that fish once they've caught it. All right, as you can see, they've also got really, really hooked talons. That's gonna help them hold better onto the fish too, sort of like a meat hook, so they're not losing anything along the way. All right, so our hawk and our eagle, their feet would look really, really similar, but less rough on the bottom and less hooked around. A little less mean and scary looking than this one. All right, so this one had talons. My next one also has talons, but he looks a little different, right? Is anyone seeing anything different about these two feet? Not yet. I think the lag is pretty strong today. In the okay. It was yesterday too. Mm. All right, so this is another meat-eating bird, and they're another bird that's using their foot like a fork, right? They're catching their food with their oh, feet. Somebody got it. Somebody got it? I said owl. Oh, you got it. It's the owl. So the owl's still going to have the talons, but the way to really tell the difference between an eagle or a hawk or an osprey talon and this owl talon is it's going to have feathers all the way down its feet. The only spot that doesn't have feathers is on the bottom, and down there it's going to be scaly skin instead. So the feathers on the owl's foot are an adaptation too. They help them to be quiet when they're flying at night, right? Their whole body is quiet. They have to make their feet quiet too. But it also keeps their feet a little bit warmer when they're out in the nighttime. Because even in the summertime when it's warm out, it's cooler at night. So it helps them maintain their body temperatures a little bit better. So this one is the great horned owl. So in New Jersey, these are our biggest owls. And you guys, if you've been watching our feeds, you probably saw our great horned owl Houdini a week or so ago. So that's how big Houdini's foot would be. So if you guys can compare it to my hand, it's a pretty good sized foot. And those sharp talons could definitely grasp and hurt me if he really wanted to, if he was alive out, right? <laughs> All right, we've got two more. This one was Miss Alexandra's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> So as you guys can see, comparatively, this guy's got a pretty long leg, right? So in the case of these guys, it's not their whole leg, but it is a whole lot of their foot and their leg. So do we have any guesses on what this huge foot and huge leg, look, it's as big as my hand, might be from? Not yet. <laughs> I'll give you all a second. Oh, someone said flamingo. Oh, you're very close. So we had flamingo when I was talking about... Um, the staying on top of the mud, right, with our shoe. So this one is a local bird. This is the great blue heron. And he's gonna do the same thing that the flamingo does. He's gonna be walking through the water, walking through the mud, and the long leg helps him do that, but the big wide foot helps him do that too. So he doesn't wanna get stuck in the mud, so instead that foot is gonna help him spread out his body weight so he doesn't sink. So if anyone's ever seen a movie where someone gets stuck in quicksand, right? They spread their body out to get out of the quicksand. These guys spread their feet out so they don't stick in the mud. All right. So you might also see that they have pretty good claws on their feet too, right? So they're using their claws to protect themselves a little bit, but also to help them to move a little bit easier too. So for a bird that doesn't need too much protection because he flies away, he's still got pretty good claws going on on his feet. All right, last one. So all the birds that I've showed you guys today all have four toes. Most birds do have four toes. There's some that have three. And usually there's three toes in the front and one toe in the back. And that's gonna help them keep their balance no matter what kind of bird they are. But sometimes birds are able to have two toes in the front and two toes in the back. Some might have it like that all the time, like birds that like to climb up things, and some are able to kind of switch. So if this was my friend the owl, he can have three in the front and one in the back, or he can do two and two. He can move that one digit to wherever he wants it to be. All right, so this last one, he doesn't look like he's too mean and scary. He doesn't have a very strong claw. He doesn't have a very long leg. Says so you. <laughs> comparatively. He doesn't have a webbed foot, but he does have a little bit of webbing if you can see it there. Does anyone have an idea of what this foot might be used for? This one's a pretty cool one. All right, so this one is my friend, the turkey. So if you guys joined us yesterday, you saw the turkey 
head or the turkey skull and I was talking about how the turkeys have sort of a utility beak. They can do a lot of different things with their beaks because they eat a lot of different things. Their feet are kind of the same way. They're using their feet to scratch, they're using their claws on their feet to protect themselves if they need to, and they're using them to run and to walk. So they don't have a very exciting foot maybe compared to our owl or our osprey, but they use their feet for lots of different things because they're eating lots of different types of foods. So that was our friend the turkey. Now my friends yesterday thought my turkey skull was a vulture skull. Right? A turkey and the vulture do look a lot like each other. My friend the turkey vulture, his foot is very, very similar to this. He might just have a different color foot and maybe a little bit sharper of his talons. All right, so we have a lot of different feet. So our friends that have the talons, they're gonna be eating meat. So their feet are like that fork that we were talking about. Our friends that have the webbed feet are gonna use their feet to help them to swim. Our friends that have long legs and maybe wide feet are gonna help themselves so they don't step into something like mud or snow. And our friends sometimes have feet that help them do many different types of things. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, um, awesome. Amanda would like to know, if owls are different sizes, are the feet sizes massively different or only a little different? Oh, that is actually a very good question. And I wish I would have brought one of our other feet with us. So this guy is the great horned owl. I said he's a very big owl. Um, if he stood on top of this foot, he'd be about this tall, right? But depending on the size of the owl, like we have screech owls at Cedar Run, they're about this big, their foot is much, much smaller. So because they're a smaller owl, their foot is going to shrink down with the size of their bodies, right? Their talons are in long screech owls are still sharp, but they're not gonna be quite as sharp because they're not catching as, lo as large of prey. Um, but they still could really hurt you if they did grab you. Good question. And then uh, Amanda would also like to know if the legs are real. They are all real. <laughs> so anyone that has watched our videos before, we like to use artifacts. We like to use pieces. And these are unfortunately from animals that passed away. So they weren't killed for their pieces, but they're used as a teaching tool, right? If I had a heron in front of me, he's not gonna let you guys scope out his foot in the person, right? So we use a lot of artifacts and pieces from animals so we can teach you all better. So they are all real, yes. That's it. All right, friends. So thank you for joining us again this afternoon for part two of build -A bird Tomorrow will be part three of build -A bird So we still have one more part of the bird that is a good adaptation, tells us a lot about the bird itself. So we already learned about beaks. Today we learned about feet. Tomorrow we're going to be learning about different types of wings and what types of different wings do different things. Um, so thank you all again for joining us. Um, if you would like to donate, we would love that. We are still taking care of animals in our hospital. We have more than 100 animals currently in our wildlife hospital. Um, and hopefully we will see all of you again tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.